I tried ChatGPT, I tried a couple of different tools. I realized that it's not just a trend. It's probably the future. I have an idea, I have market to go into, but how do I build it right now on a limited budget? When you are losing, when you are failing, when nothing is going your way, like think about it that way that you are just living the story that you will tell when you are successful. I'm getting stressed because no money is coming in, right? And I'm spending money. I didn't give up, I kept going. If someone else achieved what I want to achieve, it's clear evidence that I can do it. Last month we did $220,000 in, uh, in revenue, so. Amazing. The initial goal was 5K a month. All that changed is the perspective. Number one thing that I overlooked at the beginning was the what if I told you that you could have your own AI software and scale it to seven figures, making 200K per month without being a coder, without hiring expensive developers or having a huge budget? Because that's exactly what Stepan did. And in this interview, he was willing to put everything on the table and just show you how to do it step by step, the ads, the funnels, the social media strategies. And the most important part is he did it without having any experience in the AI world and he did it in a brand new blue ocean market. So if you wanna make more money, you gotta know the skills, the demand of the market in the AI space and you gotta know how to pick the right opportunity in the vehicle. So sit back, enjoy, let's dive in. All right, Stefan, uh, thank you for coming on the show and sharing how you're building your business and your different revenue streams and sharing with other people who are just getting started where to start and where to focus and building a business they love in 2023 and beyond. So I appreciate you taking the time and coming on. Yeah, man. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be on your podcast and uh, happy to share everything that I'm doing and hopefully it will help your audience. Yeah, for sure. So talk to me and people listen, especially young people who are getting into their first business. How much do you make and how do you make it? And then we'll dive into like specific tactics, how to get started, pricing, positioning and all of that later. Right. So I have two businesses right now. So I've been uh, in a digital marketing for the past, you know, six years. And one of my businesses is uh, my consulting business where I sell consulting, coaching courses about uh, about marketing. Mm -hmm. And that stream is purely cash flow. I have no team members there. It's literally just a cash flow business mm -hmm. uh, that funds my lifestyle. And uh, that, you know, makes roughly around... 35, 35 to 50K a month in profit, depending on mm. the month. Yeah. And uh, then I have another business that I launched this year. And that's my main focus right now. Literally 90% of my time goes into this business. And it's what I call asset business. That's the business that I'm building to eventually exit it one day. And it's a software company. It's an AI tool that uh, generates content for entrepreneurs 10 times faster than human. Uh, and we have it specifically in Czech and Slovakia market. And mm. that business is bringing right now around, last month we did $220,000 in, uh, in revenue. So Amazing. Amazing. I'm curious, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to have questions when it comes to the AI tool, because they see right. the trend, right? They see where the market is heading. And so maybe their first thought is, okay, I need to upgrade my skills. Uh, one of your companies called Paid for Skills. I believe. And so like they want to stack those skills to be more valuable to the market. Um, and then the other opportunity is I could just build a software instead. And so let's just go into that first, because I'm curious to hear what made you do take that decision and um, pivot into AI software? Was it you see yeah. a need in the market or did you know that this is where it's going? So I need to be ahead when it actually gets there. Right. That's a great question because it was a combination of multiple different things, actually. Mm -hmm. Last year, I first of all, I realized that I got a little bit comfortable with my lifestyle, with, you know, my consulting business, you know, because like in my country, I used to make like 1,500 bucks a month. Yeah. Right? I, I feel like in your country, it's probably similar, right? When I was working Same, a nine yeah. to five job, I was making, you know, uh, 1,500 bucks a month. And suddenly you are, you know, building a business, you are on a journey and you get to the point where, you know, money is like, it makes you comfortable. You are traveling the world. And I was at that point where I was making good money for myself. And, uh, you know, I was able to provide for my wife, travel, but I realized that I'm a little bit more, I'm, I'm comfortable. And I know mm. that uh, there is like different levels to the game. I obviously yeah. meet with people who are doing like f f with my numbers, 
it's nothing for them, right? What they yeah. are doing in their businesses. I was like, I always wanted to do something where it would be not just my name, but building actual brand, right? And mm. software business is extremely lucrative. And for a long time, I was thinking about like starting a software business. But mm. first, I lacked idea. And second, I'm not a developer, right? So mm. I was like, I all had this objection. I don't, I'm, I'm not a developer. Maybe I will hire someone out. What if it doesn't work, right? So I never actually stepped out of that comfort zone of consulting and uh, to actually do that. But last year, there was like a first, first, uh, I would say, reason why I went into that. But the second one was AI, obviously. So last year, as everybody, we started to see the rise of chat GPT and everybody's talking about AI, everybody's trying it. So, you know, I tried chat GPT, I tried a couple of different tools and I realized that it's not just a trend. Yeah. But it's a, it's probably the future and future of marketing as well. So I was like, okay, how can I combine what I do with marketing? How can I combine it with uh, AI? How can I be part of this? Yeah. So, you know, after checking a couple of apps and stuff like that, I went to and checked what is available in my market in Czech mm. and Slovakia. And there was no AI tool at all. So I was like, what if I build AI tool specifically for Czech and Slovakia markets? So we are first there and it's specifically for entrepreneurs, you know, who struggle with content creation or then don't have time for that. So that's what we did. Uh, that, that was like, the, that was the idea behind it. Got it. And that makes a lot of sense because if you go international and you built your personal brand internationally as well, but you chose to, to go uh, national first because there was a better yeah. opportunity to do so. And if I look at Finland right now, where I live or even Sweden, or Norway, I don't think there's anything that's huge. There's not like a Jasper right. that AI, you know, right. in, in yeah. our country. And so there's a huge opportunity there for people who are maybe from a smaller country. They see from a global marketplace, they see what's happening and they go, I have all these data points, these data sets, these insights, and I know what's going to happen, what's already happening. So why don't I go and build something in my own country? But then again, the, uh, the objection to comes to their mind like, this limiting belief of I'm not a developer. I'm not, maybe they don't have a yeah. budget. You know, you had your consulting business. How would you say um, that you could approach someone who's maybe is a developer um, or even pay someone very affordably um, to do a no code, you know, sort right. of open AI layer and build your own version of chat GPT. What's the strategy there for, for beginners yeah. starting out? hundred percent. So and that's, that's a valid objection, obviously. I have mm. an idea, I have a market to go into, but how do I build it right now on a limited budget, yeah. right? By the way, to your point where, yeah, you can go into these different countries where it's not developed yet, right? It's not, there There are not some big players like ChatGPT, for example, or Jasper here in the US. Mm. So that was that, that's, what, that's what I did there. And the timing is a huge advantage there. That's why I didn't, because my personal brand is international. And I went to check, even though I had zero audience there, right? Because I knew that the timing was way better than in the US. But back to that question with the developer. For me, I was lucky because uh, one of my past clients is a developer and he's from Czech as well. And mm -hmm. at the time he started to work on a different project together and which, which was quite good idea as well, but we, we weren't really excited about it. It was again about online courses and stuff like that. Mm. So I came to him with this idea of the, you know, building an AI tool. I showed him like AI is huge in US and he immediately bought. And with a developer, mm. if I, if I go right now and I talk to a beginner, you have a couple of options, you know, first option is you can find a developer. There's a bunch of sites, obviously, where you can find developers like Upwork and stuff like that, where you could hire a developer to build your tool. Now, yeah. I don't really recommend it for people who are on a budget because first of all, it will probably cost you a lot of money. Yeah. And second, it will cost you a lot of time because if that developer is working on your project, but it's not really his project, yeah. with the developers, they will just postpone a lot, right? So he yeah. will tell you it will be three months or six months, it will end up being 12 months. So that's that's not really the option I, I really liked. So second option is you find a developer which is what I did, and you give give the developer equity. So mm. with my partner, we just went 50-50. Yeah. And the huge benefit of that is, first of all, it's his project right now, meaning right now he's working on it like crazy. 
Yeah. So he built, he built the tool really quickly simply because it's, 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 home, it's his own project, right? Yeah. It's different when you are working on something that is your own and yeah. something that is not your own. And second, I didn't spend any money out of my own pocket because right mm. now we are partners. So I'm the one handling marketing and customer acquisition and stuff like that. And he's the one who's developing the tool. So yeah. I didn't spend any money on development. It's just his time. And if I would be like totally newbie and I don't have a past client who is a developer, I was just trying to find someone who is a developer. And obviously it's just about selling. You need to sell the developer on your idea yeah. and offer him a great deal, whether it's 50%, whether it's 30%, 20%, whatever. We went 50-50. I think that's fair because I'm handling the, the marketing yeah. and the selling. And he's Both are equally the, important. You know, you exactly, can't have, yeah. if you have a great software, but nobody knows about it, it's not going to matter. Uh, and also if you have great right. marketing, but your software sucks, it's going to crash and burn and people are going to catch up to it. Right. They're going to pick something better. So you need, you need both for sure. And what's interesting is you have your personal brand internationally, but then you launch this in your own country. And obviously yeah. I'm sure people from your own country, they see you go and travel the world. They have questions like, how are you doing it? And that sort of thing. They follow you on Instagram and stuff, but I saw a post that you made recently. I think for every 1,000 uh, visitor to your webinar, so they watch your webinar about the AI and the software, you collect $22,500 in cash from those 1,000 people. Talk to me about what you did before that and how you got yep. the idea of, hey, let's let's actually do a webinar instead to get the right. ad spend back and recoup it on the front end. Because that's super smart. Yeah. And by the way, I don't really have followers in Czech Republic and Slovakia. So I didn't even launch it to any of my audience. Mm. We launched it straight to cold traffic. So obviously that was the first question that we had, right? So my partner started developing the tool. We were excited about it. And I started thinking, okay, how do we launch it? Because I've never launched the software. It was, yeah. uh, it's my first business in, a, in, in, this, in this industry. Mm. So I was like, okay. We wanted to build the first thing that I want need to mention is I wanted to focus on recurring revenue yeah. because there's a lot of softwares when they initially launch, they Ooh. start selling lifetime deals. Yeah. Right. And I hate that idea personally. I mean, yeah. I get it why they do it. They want to have a cash flow uh, at the beginning, which makes sense. But I hate the idea because I want to build recurring revenue right away. So yeah. I like the idea that someone is selling like annual package, for example, at the beginning. But at the same time, I, I would do that if I had my own audience. By the way, for the context, if you are building a tool, you have your own audience, I would literally do like a launch or webinar to my own audience and I would sell annual package, for example, right? Mm. Or some book subscription. But given that we didn't have any audience, what I did is we simply offered five-day trial, five-day mm. free trial with a credit card required. And after five days, they uh, can stay on the package and they are built, built monthly. Right. Or yearly if they What's it? like so, 97? Yeah, so no, we have we have different packages. On average, it's 60 bucks a month. Okay. 60 bucks a month. Okay. And you know, so so we launched the free trial offer, and it was literally that's that's one one advice I would give to anyone. We launched quick, right? Imperfectly. Yeah. So literally, we, we didn't even have any sales funnel. We just had a website where we offered free five-day trial, and I started turning ads to that uh, to that website. And what happened was uh, people started signing up, right? And we had a credit card required. And I don't know about your country, but in my country, people are not to use, uh, not used to like paying with cards and yeah. definitely not used to giving cards for free trials. Mm. So we got a bunch of people complaining about why should I give a credit card? Is this a scam, right? So I was like, okay, maybe let's try to listen to them and let's remove the, the card. Mm. So we tried to do it, the free five-day trial without any card. And it was horrible. Suddenly, yeah. all our numbers dropped, right? I was like, okay, this doesn't work. And the reason when I was analyzing it, why it didn't work was because there is no commitment and there is no urgency. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't know if they will try it today or in 14 days or in one month yeah. if they have like a freemium version. Good point. So the five days, yeah, the five days is just there's clear commitment that, okay, I need to try it out and I need to make a decision at the end. It's either yes, I continue or no, I will cancel the account. Yeah. And for cash flow, especially if you're on paid ads, super important, right? To start like having predictability with that cash flow. Yeah. So we did we did a five day trial thing, and um, it got us to over thousand active monthly paying customers in less than three months. 
So it actually went really well. Uh, we can go, you know, deeper into like how do we drive tra traffic because there's a lot of things we do. Mm. But when I go right now, like quickly into that webinar, we we got stuck around at around ninety thousand dollars a month for three months, mm. literally every month around ninety k a month, and it started growing slowly, right? And the main problem was the scalability of this model because yeah. you know if you are running paid advertising into free five day trial. You don't get paid for five days. Yeah. And after five days, 30% of people continue and pay you like 60 bucks, which is not a lot, right? It actually costs you more to acquire a customer from paid ads. Mm. So it's not really a model that you can scale unless you have like a, you know, big money from investors and you are living off that money, which we don't, right? Yeah. So I was like, okay, what is the model that I can implement here to recoup the ad spend as fast as possible and grow our tool with, with, uh, with ads? And that's where a webinar comes in. And I need to give credit to Russell Brunson, by the way, for mm. this idea. He's talking about linchpin model and stuff like that. Because yeah. the idea of the webinar is a little bit more unique than what a lot of people do. It's uh, they register for the webinar, right? And then after that registration, there's immediately offer to get into the free trial of our tool. Mm. And that's actually our main thing. I want to get them to our free trial because that's what builds our monthly recurring revenue. Yeah. And then they watch the webinar and at the webinar, I sell $700 offer. Mm. Now to explain it, to explain it, six months of our tool on the highest package is 700. Okay. But, and I wanted to sell like a book subscription of that offer because after that, I want them to get on a monthly recurring revenue as well. Yeah. But, you know, if I would offer, hey, prepay six months of our tool without even trying it on our highest ticket package, it's not really good offer, right? Yeah. So what I did instead is I created an online course that we are pre-selling right now, and it's relevant to my to my tool. So it's AI Marketing Academy, how mm. to master AI in marketing. And in the offer on the webinar, I sell that course. That's the main thing I sell. And then I give them a couple of bonuses. And the first bonus is free access to our tool for six months. I love so that. So it's the same price, but it's the positioning is different. <clears throat> So right now they feel like, okay, okay, I'm getting this tool that he's been showing me this entire webinar for free for six months. That's amazing, right? That's no brainer. So that's why the webinar converts so well. And right now I want to go into like why it's, why it's unique and what Russell gave me as an idea. Because a lot of people, they want to make, yeah, a lot of people, they want to make money out of that $700 offer or $1,000 yeah. offer, $2,000 offer. For us, I, if I break even on that offer, I'm happy yeah. because if it pays for my ads and I can scale it, then I'm getting all those trials on the thank you page for free. So I'm acquiring customers on a monthly billing completely for free. Yeah. Right. Right now it's get, going better than expected. So we are making three to one return on ads with the webinar itself, but it's just a signal for me scale because when I scale and even if my profit lowers, I get more people to a trial. Yeah. So, and I get more sales and I build bigger audience. I build bigger email list. I mean, we build, we have like 70,000 people around our email list in six months right now. Right. 70,000? Yes. Amazing. And then yeah, yeah, what yeah. most people don't understand is the value of an email list. Like if you wanted to do a five day challenge, you have 70,000 yeah. people to do a five day free challenge where you can also upsell a VIP that comes with a free trial, uh, where you right. can also pitch the $700 offer at the end of the challenge where you can educate them on AI, how to use it. You can uh, provide different success paths and careers online where you could use the AI. Because we build funnels, yeah. for example. We use AI to speed up time to deliver, right? For content to get in lead generation, to get clients, we can use AI to create better content, storytelling, uh, brainstorming, <clears throat> even with design. You know, some of the design yeah. tools, we can use some of that for maybe backgrounds or graphics and mock-ups. And it's just interesting to see where, where the market is going. Okay, so yeah, you, scaled, you, you scaled from zero to then, uh, I think you said 90,000 a month from the five-day trial who switched to a more upfront payment model yeah. where you got the free trial and the $700 offer on the webinar. And you are now at 200K per month. Yeah, we basically, when we launched the webinar, it went fast. So we went from 3K days to like 10K days. Hmm. We launched it in the, you know, on 13th last month. 
So, you know, before we were doing like 3K days and after we started doing 10K days. So this month, actually, if everything goes well, we are on track to do more than 300K a month because we are doing more than 10K every single day uh, because of this webinar, because there's more cash flow upfront, right? Yeah. Isn't it interesting when you when you start in your entrepreneurship journey, you think that the goal is 10K per month so you can travel. Right, yeah. And then yeah. now when you start hanging out with millionaires and uh, DECA millionaires, you're like, 10K per day should be the minimum, right? And I'm not right. there yet, not every day, some days, but not every yeah. day. And then you think, why shouldn't this be every day? Because it's not, it doesn't feel different. Talk to me about, and, and to young people listening, yeah. talk to us about how different it is to make 300K per, per month versus maybe 30K per month. Um, mm -hmm. And I want people to see that it's actually not something crazy. You just do more of what's working and like, as you've described, you literally just innovate and do more of what you see working to recoup ad spend. And then you leverage yeah. different platforms. Maybe talk about that, leveraging different platforms yeah. to launch multiple uh, ads to, to get to that number. Yeah, I will answer first the uh, first the first question, meaning the the money thing, right? Yeah. Because that's a, that's a great point. And I just recently made a post on Facebook about this, by the way, that you know, you can't really change the reality. Like if you have, but, but, but you can change your perspective. Yeah. Right? And I, I I was thinking about this a lot because if I tell you that 100,000, we, we can look at $100,000, for example, and we can see different things, right? When I was working nine to five job and someone told me that, you know, I could make $100,000 in a year, I, it would feel impossible for me, right? I'd be like, okay, this is impossible. I'm making yeah. like 30K a year right now. And it would be like a, a huge amount of money. For me, the initial goal was 5K a month. I thought that 5K a month will set me free. Right? It's way above the, the wage, the average wage here in Czech Republic. That was my goal. So if in that mindset frame where I'm earning this money, I look at $100,000, I'm like, this is a lot of money. And it feels impossible to even make it in a year. But there, there are other people, like you said, when you are hanging out with successful people, they can look at $100,000 and be like, it's a bad month. Yeah. Right. Right now, in the position with the software, like if we do hundred thousand dollars this month, obviously it's a bad month because we would yeah. go from two hundred k to two hundred k, and it's just interesting to see all it all that changed is the perspective. So I would actually, if knowing what I know now, even when I'm broke in nine to five, I would start working on that mindset of how I look at money, how I how I from what perspective I look at it, right? Because you are right; it's, it doesn't feel any different. Like when you are you get into certain point. When I started making like. 20K a month, that's where I felt like there's a huge difference between how I can mm. live right now. It's just like you can you can go on nice vacations, you know, you don't need to like really uh worry about your bills if it's consistent, obviously. If yeah. you are like this, then it's it's stressful as well, even at 20k a month. But yeah. you know, that's where I started feeling like okay, I'm free right now. We yeah. can go, we can move to Thailand, this would be it, right? So that's where I really felt the change. Right now, mm. when we scale 200K, 200K a month, I don't really feel that anything is different when it comes to my lifestyle. I didn't change my lifestyle at all. And mm. the main thing is also I want to reinvest most of it into back to business, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and yeah, you are right. It's just basics. Like you, first important key is just finding that product market fit. You need to have an offer that is extremely good, that people want to buy and you find the right market to it. Once you have that, it's just about, okay, how do I get more people to see it, right? Yeah. Or what is my, I mean, like it's, it starts with the offer, then how do you sell it? That's your sales process, right? How do you sell that offer? Is it webinar? Is it free five-day trial? Is it a one-on-one -on -one strategy call? Is it a sales page that's selling low ticket offer and then upselling people, right? Like there are different sales processes. Yeah. And I, by the yeah. way, I recommend to start with one. Right? Yeah, I started yeah, with sure. one sales process. And then it's just about how do I get traffic into that one sales process that will sell my offer, right? So you need first that offer that converts and that sales process that converts. And then it's just about how do I get as many of, as much people as possible to go into that sales process? So you scale, you, you actually diversify the traffic from the beginning. That's my belief. We, we diver, diversify the traffic from the beginning because I don't want to rely on Facebook ads mm -hmm. where I get shut down like this and suddenly I'm starting from scratch. You yeah, know? that makes sense. So we can go into like what we do specifically, but the the overall strategy is start with one sales process, run traffic from multiple different sources, and once you once you do that at some great level, then you can add another sales process mm. for us webinar, 
right? And you are just scaling another sales process. And suddenly you will, you will be super diversified. It'll be super stable because you have multiple sources of traffic. You have multiple sales processes selling your main thing. For us, mm. it's the software. And and in you know at the end of the day, it's, it's all math. So it's not so much the emotional decision making of yeah. Oh, should I do YouTube ads versus Facebook or should I do TikTok ads? It's 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 all economics and math. What's you know what's working and and talk to beginners. I, I think you're using a tracking software. I, th- I think I saw a post. Someone commented on your yeah. post. So talk to people of the level of details you go into. Just so they see like, okay, people don't just sit there and they travel the world and they don't care about numbers because they're making good money. No, like successful people actually care more about tracking everything because they want to know what's working so they can double down on it. Yeah, it's a, it's a math, right? Like you are right. It's not about like number one rule about advertising, paid advertising that I have is eliminate emotions. You mm-hmm. can't make assumptions. You can't make decisions based on emotions because I've been working, you know, in the past few years, I've been working with a lot of clients where I help them spend their first money on paid ads. Yeah. And it's every single time you see how nervous they are. They are checking it, like refreshing it every few minutes. And yeah. because all they see is it's spending my money, right? Yeah. My money is coming out of my bank account and I don't see anything in the return at the beginning. So it's just like, you need to be okay with some testing period. And then just make logical decisions based on math, based on real data, real results. That's that's the first thing. And yeah, we are using uh, Hyros to track the track our data. There are a lot of tracking software, but obviously, numbers are key when it comes to paid advertising. You need to know which ad is bringing how many leads, how many sales, how much you are paying per each lead, per each sale. You need to know these numbers because otherwise you are just guessing. And yeah. the problem we had without Hyros, and you know, there are a couple of different softwares as well. I don't recommend Hyros to anyone who's just like starting out because it's more expensive. But yeah. if you are spending decent money on ads, Hyros is, is great. Uh, mm. I would be blind without that literally because yeah. the difference between the real data that Hyros is tracking and between the data that, you know, Ads manager on Facebook or Google is showing me it's just night and day. So mm. right now I can make accurate decisions where I see, okay, this ad is bringing a uh, great ROAS, meaning great return on ad spend. Uh, this one not. And I just like optimize based on real, real data there. Mm. And another thing that you mentioned, it's not just like sitting and traveling. You are actually like doing stuff. You need to also like, it, it doesn't mean like webinar is automated, which is great, right? Mm. We are, even if I don't work today, we would still get a lot of sales, but what, what happened, for example, we, we run ads for three weeks and there is something called ad fatigue, right? Especially yeah. in our smaller market, the suddenly the cost per, per lead shoot up and it doubled. And suddenly we were not getting that many registrants for that ad spend. We were not getting that many sales. So the first two days of this month, we are down with webinar. I was like, okay, I need to create new ads, mm-hmm. right? So I created new ads, launched new ads, and we, we went again up and it's running better than, than before right now. Mm. So you need to consistently change, consistently That's create new amazing. creatives. And even if something is working right now, it can stop working, right? Like yeah. you are showing those ads to real people. I mean, people are so confused sometimes. Sometimes they're like, oh, last week it went so well, but this week it just doesn't work. It doesn't convert. Well, mm. maybe it's showing to different people, right? They are still real human beings. And they may not be interested. It may show to different segments. So you need to be, you know, careful that if something is working right now, it doesn't mean it will work next week. And in two weeks, you just need to consistently be checking the data and improving, testing different stuff. So yeah, 100% agree. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to what you said previously about recurring revenue, because that's a big theme right now. Uh, Maybe it's also the the economy. People are, are more willing to spend if it's like, divided into monthly payments. And so yeah. people are signing up for memberships, for courses with payment plans, with softwares. And as a business owner, you want to probably think about, okay, if I have five different offers, how do I build recurring revenue in each of them? Because even us, we have a, we're not as big as, as you, but we have a software, we have 200 yeah. uh, users. And so that's nice. obviously, uh, it's uh, recurring revenue. And then we have right. a certification program. We have um, the uh, funnel agency, and we have consulting and coaching. And in all of these, I have payment plans. I've even started to do, as I raised my fees with the funnel agency, to do like at least you pay 50% upfront, 50% yeah. afterwards. And now I hired the best con- uh, conversion rate optimization specialist in the game to offer recurring uh, conversion services. And so I'm going to scale the agency to 100K per month as well. 
talk to nice. people a little bit about recurring revenue and different ways that you can, that either you've done it for yourself or maybe for your clients where you can get those recur- those uh, recurring payments coming in so that every single month you're not starting from zero. You're starting maybe from right. 40K per month and then you add on top of it every day, every month. Yeah, that's actually a big lesson that I learned because mm. for a long time I didn't have recurring revenue. Mm. I mean, I had, but it was from like high ticket clients. And you know, if you are depending on few clients, you can lose it really quickly. Yeah. You know? So there's also a different games to recurring revenue because right now if we have 1,300 customers paying us, like you are, it's more stable than if you are depending on yeah. three clients paying you monthly, right? So uh, you can have both, by the way, right? It's great to have both, but I'm just saying like, that's different. But recurring revenue, I didn't have it for a long time. And frankly, even when I was making a good money already and you are traveling, I, I've been stressed a lot of time. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, for example, I had a good month. Next month, I was starting from zero. We were traveling. I wasn't focusing on work that much, you know, and I, was, I wasn't getting like new clients actively. And suddenly I was like, okay, I'm like spending a lot of money here on traveling, but I'm not bringing new cash flow in, right? And even if you are safe, like, I, I don't know if, you, if, if, if you've ever experienced it. Even if I have money in my like saving accounts and, and yeah. I'm good for several months to travel yeah. there, I'm getting stressed, right? Because I don't want to, I, I have this mindset, I don't want to go down, right? I want to be yeah. always like growing. So I'm, I'm getting stressed because no money is coming in, right? And I'm spending money. And yeah, I learned it hard way that recurring revenue is just like must have if you have a business. Like right. any business I, that I will do moving forward, it needs to have a recurring revenue. And I see it with software, how predictable it is. We don't need to do anything new and we will still make decent money like right, per month because people are on a monthly billing. And also it's really valuable if you plan to exit your business potentially, yeah. right? Like investors love recurring revenue. So nobody will buy a business where there's no predictability at it. So how, how can you build it? Obviously subscriptions, we have software that's a subscription people pay monthly or yearly. You can make a membership site if you are in a coaching space, right? Where people can pay you 97 a month, 197 a month, whatever. Uh, there are some huge membership sites as well, making uh, you know millions of dollars. You can obviously payment plans are another another great one. So if you have if you are selling like 2k offer or even high ticket offer, you can split it into payment plans. And if you are getting a lot of clients, which happened then to me uh, as well on a consulting side, yeah, you build up some decent recurring revenue just from payment plans. You know, it's not necessarily like a subscription, but mm. they are on a payment plans. And uh, when you have enough people there and it's higher ticket, well, you don't need. I mean, a huge amount of a huge amount of people, but you know, it adds up quickly, like to 10k, 20k, 30k, and recurring revenue. And obviously, it's just easier to operate when you know yeah. that next month you are not starting from scratch, from zero, and you know you have money coming in. So yeah, yeah. would hundred percent recommend it. Quick transition into I don't know if you're well, I you're you're fit, you're ripped, so you you have to be into health a little bit. Talk to us about productivity. Especially when you're traveling, maybe it can be hard to find a good desk, a good, you know, right. environment to uh, to be productive, and then a little bit about health, maybe as well, because I'm I'm big on yeah. biohacking these days. Yeah, when it comes to the product productivity, um, on the during travel, obviously it's it's more difficult, but you know you just need to be disciplined. If you are an entrepreneur, uh, you just need to be disciplined. That's why I actually believe right now that not everyone can be entrepreneur. I believed mm-hmm. in the past that. Everyone can do it. I was like, why, why, why more people just don't go yeah. and start their own business? You know? And I realized that it's not for everyone, right? For example, my wife, she's not that kind of person that would be like, you know, she would wake up, she would get idea for a business, she would be working on something on, on her own. She wants to, she, she, she would be a great employee because she get uh if you tell her something, she will do it, right? Mm. But not everybody is disciplined enough to even on the travels to wake up early just put in the work and then do something. So I'm super disciplined in yeah. this. So we, when we were traveling, what we did, by the way, because obviously I was with my wife uh, and I wanted to spend time with her and, and, and travel and explore stuff. So I always wake up early and uh, I was waking up 5 a.m. even when you we were living in Thailand, Bali, mm-hmm. everywhere. I worked until noon, right? Mm-hmm. So I did around from 6 to, to 12, 6 hours. And then we I hang out with my wife. We traveled, we explore places. And then when we came back, I usually worked also at the evening, like one one more or two more hours, mm. you know? So usually two more hours. So I, I had these like 
around eight hours a day. It obviously yeah. depends if we have a, like a full day trip or whatever, but yeah. this was like my, my routine. And then way we had a, we had a whole day together and I still did a lot of work because I wake up early and then at the, at the beginning, I, I, uh, at the end, I worked like a few more hours. Yeah. So that was like my, my routine uh, when it comes to productivity. That's interesting. It's been the same for me when we go to Portugal or something. Um, in the yeah. mornings, I work. And then obviously with family, I have two kids, two daughters. So we want to go yeah. and explore. And then sometimes um, if they're out in the pool six hours and I'm the ADHD person who's like, I'm good with two hours, you know. So then I have yeah. two more hours in the day and then maybe two hours in the night um, right. at, the, at the lounge area or, you know, so at at the res- at a resort so i like that sort of of environment what about health uh, is there anything that you're doing to be productive to stay alert uh maybe a yeah. supplement stack or anything that you've seen work really great for you obviously sleep is the most important part yeah yeah I, you know i do i do basics really like i would mm. love to dive deeper into biohacking i love that and i you know it's super interesting to me i feel like we are also watching the, the similar people i said you uh yeah. it was in an event with gary Breka. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just like, it's super interesting. I feel like your health should be the number one priority always because like you can have um, seasons of your lives where you put in more work than usual, where you just work a lot, right? And it's okay as yeah. long as it's not like going for years, right? And you are mm-hmm. not neglecting your family or are not ne- neglecting your health because I love the saying, when you are ill, there's only one thing you want, right? Yeah. Like you don't care about anything else. You just want to be healthy. So, you know, you can have all the money in the world, but if you are not healthy, it's useless. If you don't yeah. have people to share it with, if you neglect your family, it's useless. Like I wouldn't be happy if I if I don't have my wife, for example, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it's just like, obviously depends on a person, but I would never like go over the board where I would like just neglect completely my family or my health. Mm-hmm. And health is definitely a priority. So sleep, like you said, I do basics. Uh, with sleep, I have ordering to check my sleep. So I know how I'm sleeping. Uh, obviously, I do, I have a uh, blue, blo- light blue blockers. light blocking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have blockers I, that I wear uh, usually, you know, 90 minutes before I go to sleep, sometimes two hours before I go to sleep. And it definitely uh, made a difference. So I can I can actually feel it that, you know, I'm, it's easier to fall asleep after, mm. after wearing them for, let's say, two hours before I go to sleep. So, you know, you should have, obviously, the bedroom should be cold. It shouldn't be, like, super warm. That's, that's something that helps. Um, and you know those be- don't eat two hours before you go to sleep. Yeah. Two to three hours. I never eat before I go to sleep. That's that's and that's caffeine. number one rule as well. Yeah, I don't even drink coffee, so for me oh, it's okay. easy, right? But but if someone yeah, if, if someone is drinking coffee or don't drink it before you go to sleep, it's obvious, yeah. right? Like it will I was shocked. Your... I was shocked to find out from Gary Brecker that <clears throat> caffeine stays in your body way longer than you would think. So I used to drink okay. like six months ago, even three months ago. I could have, if I really wanted to finish a project, because I am I go all in. So if it's a presentation or PDF, I just spend a lot of time right. finishing it. So sometimes I would go, if I'm with family during the day a little bit, I would drink an energy drink at 9 p.m. and then work to 4 a.m. Because <laughs> then I would right. just sleep longer to get my eight hours because there's no alarm clock. There's yeah. no boss. But what I didn't realize yeah. was I would wake up tired, then have another energy drink. And because it was a healthy one, zero sugar, and it was a more natural one, but I didn't think about the adren- adrenal fatigue that I could get from caffeine. And so studying mm-hmm. health foundations, um, I think it was Hormosi who said, professionals never don't do the basics. So it's just right. you know, with right. your sales yeah. calls, your lead gen, your content, your ads, they always do the basics first for a long period of time before they add another yeah. thing to their you know, and that's, that's, that's such a great point because it applies to both business, health, whatever you do, right? So for example, with business, people ask me, how do you scale so quickly, right? From zero to 200K, like I just do basics, like, like literally don't do anything special, anything that is secret. I just do the basic and I repeat them, I do them consistently. When it comes to health, like if you if you study it a little bit more, you find out actually a lot of these things that looks like they are healthy are not even healthy, right? Yeah. It looks like it's healthy, Most- like all these like, all these protein things, right? That they are selling in like in in, in markets where you feel, oh, I will, you know, increase my protein thing. intake, right? Yeah, most of it isn't isn't healthy. Yeah, it's so you it's not. Go back yeah. to, to the basics to get the the raw right. material from as close as possible to the source. Last question for you. Well, there's two. First one is, was the 
maybe some mistakes or something you would tell someone um, that is 10 years younger than you, maybe your younger self or your future kids, they watch this video on YouTube and um, what's something that you wish that they would know when they get started to maybe avoid some mistakes or to get to their goals faster or maybe eliminate toxic people or just to live a better overall quality life? I think uh, number one thing that I overlooked at the beginning was the mindset. And mm-hmm. I know it's cliche, but I I remember when I was getting started and someone, and I watched webinar or I watched some presentation and someone started talking about mindset, I immediately shut down. I was like, yeah. just give me the tactics. I want to know where should I click in the ads manager so that I make money, right? Mm-hmm. That was like my whole mindset. I'm, I was looking for these tactics, but you know, there are different things that you can learn. You can learn tactics. And those things work, but they are changing all the time. There is not really mm. a value in learning some tactic. On the level level above, there are strategies, right? The strategies are a little bit better. They are they are still changing, but not, not that often. And they can give you great foundation. But then above that, there are principles. Mm. And principles usually never change. I remember reading a book from uh, like those old school copywriters, right? Like Claude Hopkins, right? And uh, David Ogilvy. Gary Halbert, and mm. they literally teach the principles that they did, did in direct mail when it comes to marketing. And it we just do the same thing right now on different platforms, just do it on social yeah. media. So that's where the value is, learning principles. And the same goes into principles when it comes to like mindset, how to think, because I feel like the biggest mistake that I did, like there's a lot of them, right, obviously, but the biggest one was just being too comfortable. Like I, I was saying that I want to build something or do something. Mm. I was saying that, right? And I, I meant it, but like my actions was not really reflecting that in a yeah. sense where I was like still in a comfort zone. You know, I didn't want to invest uh, in my, in my like I was scared to invest in my business, uh, you know, in whether that's mentors, whether that's coaching programs, whether that's into paid advertising, because yeah. I was like, what if I lose this money, yeah. right? So you I feel like that, that has been, that's been holding me for, for years, literally, where I was stuck at a similar level. And right now I see it with a software company as well. Right now it's just like, okay, we make this money. I don't take a penny of that. And I reinvest it back into business, but back into advertising to scale. So it's just going out of that comfort zone, whether that's investing into your business, whether that's trying that idea, when, even when it feels scary mm. and, and just, you know, have a right expectations, obviously. Like there'll be so many challenges, so many hoops. That's why you see people come and go, right? And yeah. those are people who are not serious. We just like, have a first problem or they lose their first money or whatever, which will happen to everybody and they just give up. So I feel like that resilience is important. Yeah. Yeah. They have this expectation of success. And then if it doesn't happen as soon as they want, they think something is wrong with them or, or the vehicle they're, they're in. So they look for another opportunity instead of seeing it literally as a lesson, like without that failure, you wouldn't have this new layer of experience that you now bring into your next venture, your next relationship, your next yeah. business, whatever it is. Like for you, because of everything you did and learn and work with a client, and maybe in the beginning it was kind of like, okay, I'm figuring things out. and was scary, uh, but you kept reinvesting us. And now you're bringing all these skills. We've talked offer creation. We've talked funnels. We've talked ads, uh, copywriting. You bring all of these skills into your literally million dollar and multi-million dollar uh, future exit with your AI software. And it wasn't just timing. It wasn't luck. It was opportunity meeting preparation with you stacking those skills. No, I 100% agree. I I, I say it multiple times that I'm literally just leveraging what I learned over the past two years when it comes to marketing. You know, I'm leveraging those skills to scale a great offer in a, during a great, like market, in a great market and with a great timing, right? But I'm leveraging those skills and yeah, you're right. The expectation is just so important, right? You have a right expectation because like when something is not working, when you lose money, when you fail, like I felt more times than I succeeded, 100%. Mm. Anything you do, when you launch ads, you will launch more ads that fail mm. than those that succeed, right? YouTube but those videos, that same succeed, thing. You post YouTube more videos video. than actually those that go viral, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I want to give you a shout out for being consistent because I've seen your journey and uh, <laughs> On you, I've tried to be consistent on YouTube for a long time. It's like it's super hard. difficult. It's for the me. hardest. It's business hard. Business. It's hard because that's that's where you don't see the results at the beginning yeah. at all, right? So uh, yeah, it's definitely hard. And it's like I feel like it's in anything that you do, you will fail more than you succeed. But those wins should, will be probably bigger than those losses combined, right? And that's what I see. And mm. 
I try to think about it when you are losing, when you are failing, when nothing is going your way. Like think about it that way that you are just living the story that you will tell when you are successful, right? That's how I you look will, at it, yeah. Will, yeah, you will tell the backstory. Hey, this was the time where everything went wrong, but I didn't give up. I kept going, right? And that's why I'm where I'm right now. So yeah, that's super important to, to understand. If someone else achieved what I want to achieve, it's clear evidence that I can do it, yeah. right? Because that person is not, like you said, it's not smarter, whatever. Uh, so if someone is doing it and if multiple people are doing it, like you are just not at that skill level yet to get there, right? You just need to keep going. But it should be that motivation that, okay, it's possible. And mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the first thing, right? When I was getting started, it will be you the same thing. I was brand new to the online world, to digital marketing. I didn't even know when I was playing football that, you know, someone, you can make money online. Yeah. I literally didn't know it because I wasn't interested in that, right? So when I got into that world, you are skeptical at first, right? Mm -hmm. You are like, like, are these people lying or can I really do it? Like, how do I even do this? Where do I even start? So you are like having completely different mindset because you are just new to that stuff. And it evolves with that. And then I realized, okay, if they can do it, I can do it too. And it should be that motivation. That even if, if I'm not there yet, if they did it, I, I can get there if I'm just consistent enough and I'm executing those basics that we talk about. You know what I think to, to summarize everything? There's two words that I think can summarize what you need to make it to become successful. And it's uh, stress tolerance and pain tolerance. Because you can mm -hmm. learn everything. You can figure things out. You can spend time investing yourself where you have reinvest and everything. But if you're too worried about everyone around you, what they think, your parents, your friends, you're shifting into this new person. And people might tell you literally to your face, like, who do you think you are? Who do you right. think? Um, that you are to do this that someone else has done to become a millionaire or whatever it is. And so, especially as a college dropout, I've been seeing a lot of that in my early days. And um, yeah. that was stressful internally, a struggle, and it was painful, but you're yeah. not your own emotions. You're separate from your emotions. Your identity is you and it's what you created, not what the society puts as a label onto you. If you can follow yeah. that and you can take some stress and pain and then realize, ah, in a hundred years, it actually doesn't really matter. So let's just do it. Right. Let's just go for it. 100% man. Stefan, appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you everyone uh, for tuning in. And I'm sure Stefan, this was um, um, some of the most in-depth shows and episodes with how to make money, how you're making it, how you're getting traffic, how you're converting and and how you look at the marketplace to find opportunities and then how to work on yourself to make it, sustain it and multiply it. Uh, in the future. So appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time for being an open book and sharing everything you know. We'll talk for to sure, you. man. Thanks for, thanks for having me.